This is Culture Communication and Brand Moments with Shelby Joe Long, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Culture Communication and Brand Moments is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Shelby Joe Long. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm Shelby Jo Long. Excited that you're here to join me on the Genius Entrepreneur Podcast. I am CEO of Business Dynamics and Strategic Advisor Board Vice President. And I'm here today to talk to an entrepreneur that has created a business out of their expertise. Now, I know Danielle through the rogue publishing partner community and the writing community that I have been exposed to in this past year as I have published my book. I'm excited to know a little bit more about her business and introduce her unique business to this audience. There are many opportunities ahead for you as an audience member to understand what availability you have on the publishing industry to help provide a piece of material that identifies your brand. So I'm excited to get into this conversation. So Danielle Perlin Good with the Soul Aligned Ghostwriter, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Shelby. Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, if we could just, I know a little bit about you, but maybe you can just give us the 30,000 foot overview of you and your business and, and then we'll start the conversation from there. 1000%. That sounds fantastic. So my name is Danielle Perlin Good, and I am an award winning best selling author. I help C suite executives share their powerful legacies by unleashing their memoir, self help, personal growth, and leadership books so they can create massive impact and transform lives. That's great. Tell me how you got into that and what's your background? Absolutely. I'm just so curious I, about the focus on CEOs and all that yes, kind of stuff. Yes. Tell us your background. background. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So I actually have a background in journalism, and uh, that's what I majored in back when I went to undergrad. I have a BS in news editorial journalism, and I've always wanted to be a journalist. And when uh, several years ago in my career, I found myself wondering if I still wanted to write in the same capacity or if I wanted to utilize my skill sets in different ways. And I found myself really interested in social media marketing. And then I eventually landed a gig at a children's publishing company as their social media coordinator. I learned the ins and outs of traditional publishing there. I was uh, privy to lots and lots of meetings, acquisition meetings, uh, editor meetings, marketing meetings, you name it. I was I was a part of it because it was a small company. So it still is a small company. And yeah. from there, I really wanted to figure out how I could have my own business. And I was really interested in the idea of freelance writing but also to the capacity where I could really help other people in the book world, in the publishing world. And I, my eyes were open one day from a colleague of mine who I still work with to this day. And I had an opportunity to work with her as a book coach in her company. And even before that, I decided I was going to be a book coach and I just told told people in my social media community. The first thing I did, which I think a lot of people forget, is when you start something new, to tell the people who you're closest with, tell your friends, tell your family. I had an email draft that I just said, listen, I'm starting a business. If you know anybody who wants to hear me talk about writing, who wants to hear me talk about the process of writing a book, I'm looking for clients. And just being able to put yourself out there in that way. And I got my first two clients that way. So I think that that is something that a lot of people, that's that's one of my tips that I like to give when someone's just starting out, especially in a new field or a new business. Um, 
And then from there, I really realized that a lot of the work I was doing with being a book coach um, and came what, what came along with that, obviously, too, was editing, the idea of developmental editing. And I don't need to get into the nitty gritty of all the different types of editing, but, the, you know, anybody who's listening, um, just for your sake, just to know that there are many different types of editing. And it's mm-hmm. really important to know when you're working with somebody, what type of editing you want to have from them. Right. And what was happening was I was developmental editing, but I it was on the verge of ghostwriting. And I I was talking with my business coach and this was a few years ago. And she said, why don't you offer ghostwriting services? And I said, oh, I didn't even think that that was something I could offer. And Lo and behold, a lot of people were really interested in this new offer. And I learned as much as I could. And I told myself that I was really good at telling other people's stories. The other aspect of my ghostwriting business that I think makes me very unique is that I bring in meditation and energy healing work. And to me, this is really, really critical and crucial to ensure that the truest, honest, most vulnerable, raw material gets into my clients' books. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I have so many questions from that. But uh, I really, uh, first of all, I appreciate how you walked us through your entrepreneurship journey. And I really, it's interesting that you move from journalism, which is kind of mass media type of communication into the publishing industry. And now it's like, you, it's like a very focused storytelling that you do for other people at their most vulnerable state, because mm-hmm. that's when they tell their story. And that's when the story, that's when we really want to read the stories. Yeah. So that's, uh, it's just interesting to see that evolution. However, you're using the same foundational core skills throughout those things, those different areas. And I think that's something that's so important for people to think about when they're in their careers They have skills that they've honed through time and it's part of their intuition. It's part of what they feel. This is what I write about in my book too, but it's uh, it's part of their genius and they can apply it in a few different places. And it sounds like you've landed in a very, in a spot that feeds your soul and can help your uh, clients also. Uh, the other, the other comment. So thank you for sharing that entrepreneurial journey. I think that's really important to think about that. You can use your skills in many different places and you don't have to stay in one place just to do that. And you just have to be okay with the entrepreneurship challenges. But um, the other thing that's really it's interesting, and I want you to talk a little bit more about this meditation and really getting into the story. Having just written a book myself and telling my own story, I I understand how hard that is and it's digging up emotions for so many years ago and not just my emotions, like the emotions of everybody that was attached to me at that time. And it mm-hmm. was, it was hard and it was vulnerable and it dug up lots of questions that I had, even from the experience that I had 28 years ago. Yep. So can you talk more about that and how that, cause I, I think that's a pretty big differentiator for a ghostwriter. So talk more Absolutely. about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to me, when I meet somebody who clearly wants to write their story, but isn't sure about how to do it themselves. Usually there is, especially I will say with memoir or personal growth, when there are personal stories involved, it is always so hard. It's the hardest to write your own trauma. It's just very, very difficult. And even if something happens to you, like something happened in your case, right? many, many years ago. But if you don't, if you don't write about it, if you don't think about it, if you don't talk about it, it's still there. It didn't go away. It's, it still is an aspect of your life, right? So what I like to do is really dig in with my clients, especially with memoir, and ask them very vulnerable, very specific questions. And that's really where my journalism training has come in is because I learned for many, many, many years, 
what questions to ask to elicit vulnerability. And I think that that's something that is not always easy. I mean, I'm working with somebody right now on her memoir, and it's a very slow moving process with this particular client, but it's totally fine with both of us. And that's just what the energy is, is bringing to the project. And we're okay with it. However, when I whenever I meet with her, we I always learn something new about her. And if you think about that, I mean, think about if you're with a partner even for many, many years, like I was on a date with my husband, we have two little kids. And it's like totally random example. But I learned something new about his childhood like a month ago, and we've been together for 12 years. <laughs> so, yeah. But like that, those those things can happen that those events that are in our life, if someone's not asking us those questions, Sometimes we don't ask ourselves either because we don't want to bring up that pain again because that's such a raw, vulnerable state of being, right? And the thing is that every target audience for these books, they will dive into your book even further if they can, sh if they know that you're showcasing your true, honest, raw, vulnerable self. Absolutely. There's... Yeah. I, um, uh, I, for every, those that know, I'm also a communication professor. So I talk a lot about speaking and audience and how connections are made and how you can truly be charismatic with an audience. And that authenticity is so critical to be able to connect that to an audience yeah. and being vulnerable actually allows people to come in and they're more interested and you create an emotional connection. So yes. that's, that's yes, it's yes. so important in books and I and in any messaging, however, but especially when you're telling a story and writing a memoir and you don't have to. That's the other interesting thing, too, because you say you learn new things, even with your husband. You know, we learn new things and you don't need to. What I learned writing with stories, you don't need to talk about all of those things, but right. focusing your story, not necessarily in a chronological order, but I, focusing on those key key vulnerable emotional transition points I think are just so key and I absolutely. think you need to work with somebody else to be able to identify those absolutely and that's also why you know I still do offer book coaching services and there are wonderful book coaches out there and that's what a book coach does is talk with you and help you to write the story yourself now, a ghostwriter, I always say, you know, people ask me, what's the difference between a book coach and a ghostwriter? Well, the ghostwriter does about 80% or so of the writing, right? And the person, the client gives, you know, about, it's about 20%, right? But mm -hmm. you still need that 20%. You need all of that content in order to have that 80%, right? So I have also worked with clients who, like, I want a book, I want a book, I'm so busy, but I want a book. But if I'm not getting that content, and we can't figure out a good rhythm, then the book's not going to get done, right? And it's so important for me and my clients to all be on the same page and all be on board in terms of the time and energy it takes on both parties, because it is a project that a client is investing in, and it's more money, it's higher on the scale. And it's less time, but there's still that time and energy element. It doesn't, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't go away. Yeah. And with book coaching, it's different because it's about 20%. The book coach is really helping you elicit those vulnerable moments and those memories. And the 80% is the client writing and being accountable for their deadlines. Yeah. So important to have that extra, extra person there. I think so. Yeah, it's I it, it's I think it's true in business and I think it's true in writing. I think it's true in in most areas of your life having a mentor or having an accountability partner is just critical. Um because it helps you more quickly achieve your goals, that's for sure. Absolutely. So, so inform me about so I know a few ghostwriters, but um I'm just curious about what's what's your capacity? How many 
how many stories and books can you work on at a time? Because it's a, it's a emotionally intensive activity and you have to write and you have to do this. So it's, yep. you know, sure. It takes quite a bit of time. Yes. A hundred percent. So right now I have four clients. It's a lot. <laughs> and I do not recommend having four at once. This happened because of other like circumstances for both me and a couple of my clients. Um, but, um, and I will say it's, you know, partially because I, you know, this is a different conversation, but when you have, when you're doing something that's creative, you need to have that brain power and that creative energy flowing and giving birth and having a child takes a lot of that away. <laughs> yeah. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. So I um, uh, have extended deadlines with a couple of my clients who have wanted to. And my goal for 2023 is to sign six clients total. So that's going to be my goal starting in 2023. And then we'll see about 2024. I'm not making specific plans that far in yeah. advance, um, you know, unless somebody wants to hire me that far in advance, but then we'd have that conversation. <laughs> um, so that's really what I have decided that my capacity is that I would like to be able to work on two, maybe three manuscripts at a time. And then what we do too, what my team does now is if somebody comes to me and says, I have all this content, I have half a book written, but I really need a ghostwriter. So the first thing we do now is called a book assessment. And we go through the book and we charge like a certain amount, you know, depending on the circumstance, on the words, on the content. It's very, very um, individualized. And we go through and then we have a recommendation at the end. So what's really important to us is that they get their goals achieved with the book, right? Okay. So we talk about that from the very beginning. And a lot of times, you know, there's a couple of different camps. There's one camp that says, I know what I want, and I'm going to go for it right now, which I do have a couple of clients like that right now. And then I've also encountered people who say that they want something, but don't really know what that end result is, and don't really know if having a ghostwriter, having a book coach is going to be what they need, right? Because in all of our lives, we encounter people who enjoy the shiny object syndrome, right? And we talk, I like talking about that because I find that the shiny object syndrome, that means that, oh, that looks good. I think I should do that because this person wrote a book. So I'm going to write a book too, or I'm going to do this because, you know, this person who I follow is doing this. And I really like the idea of wanting to achieve goals. But I also like the idea of being semi realistic <laughs> about what you're able to achieve in the time frame and in your life, right? And ensuring that that's something that's feasible for for you and something that you actually want to do. Because if somebody comes to me and they say, I think I want to write a book, I'm not sure, I don't know if I need to go through, I don't know if I need this, then it's going to be a lot more difficult for me to know how I can help them. Sure. Does that make that's, sense? <laughs> that's part of being a coach too, is kind of directing toward what might be the right solution. So. Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Exactly. And sometimes that's what they need. So sometimes all of people come and say, I need a ghostwriter. And I'll say, I think you need a business coach. And here are some recommendations. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's true. And it's, just to pivot a little conversation a little bit, yeah. I know you through road publishing. So, um, yeah. you, can you talk a little, cause I, I feel that that group that we have access to so many people with so many different specialties yeah. that it's just an amazing resource for people. So can you talk a little bit about your involvement with that and what you think about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I actually, I'll give an example of a recent client who we did a book assessment for, and she was looking for um, a potential illustrator, graphic designer. And I said, my first thought was, oh, I have this whole community in Rogue 
And I can go to Rogue and I can ask. And I was able to put her in touch with somebody from Rogue. And, you know, it's it's never up to the connector whether or not that relationship is going to turn into something or not. But I felt really good about the fact that it was very easy for me to be able to help my clients in a moment because I had this uh, because I had this network already. So whenever I have somebody who comes to me who wants, you know, a recommendation on something specific, you know, whether it's marketing or something else, you know, I can go to Rogue and I can say, wow, I have all of these different people who specialize in these skills and I can send intro emails. I can figure out who will be best suited for this person or this client. And that's invaluable because our time is invaluable. Absolutely. It's such a great group. I'm just trying to think of a different word than great, but it's such a, it, there's so much experience and so many different areas of interest. And it's just so nice that we can stay in our niche and stay in our area and develop our own, our own superpowers, our own strengths within our own business. But then we have that whole opportunity to, to refer and it it's best serves the clients. So I think it's exactly, a, exactly. And I always say at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's never to me, any type of competition. I don't really like that word in this type of business model. I really want the client to feel like they're being taken care of to achieve their goals. So if that means that they need somebody specific for a graphic designer, they need an illustrator, or they need a copy editor, or they need a proofreader, or they need a ghostwriter, then they know that they can get all of that through Rogue, which is really invaluable and amazing. And the word that came to me when I think of, of Rogue is dynamic. It's a very dynamic group. Agreed. Yeah. That, uh, and we can find your contact information on the Rogue Publishing Partner site. But where else can we find you, Danielle, if, uh, if the listeners want to get a hold of you and they're eager to get their story out, but they're not quite sure they have the time for it? Where can they yeah. find you? Yes. So you can send me an email at danielle at the soul aligned ghostwriter.com. If you, if this is message is really resonating with you and you want to book a coffee chat and talk about what kind of book project you have and talk about what kind of support you're looking for, then just go to my website, the soul aligned ghostwriter.com and you can book a coffee chat right on there. That's great. Well, we'll make sure all of your links are included in the in the description. So we'll make sure everybody can reach you as easily that they can. I, uh, I'm so glad you came on today to the podcast to let us know a little bit more about your business and how you can help clients and how what you do is dig into those deep, vulnerable places and help develop that emotional connection with people. That's something I think we're really missing in all the marketing noise out there. And I think it's so important to talk about. So thank you for doing that. Yes, yes, 100%. I completely agree with you. And, you know, I'm all about honest, raw, vulnerable conversations. I'm not going to come up to you at a party and ask how the weather is. I will ask, (laughs) (laughs) I will ask how your day is. And I will actually want to know. All right. No small talk. We get right to the point. Nope. (laughs) Danielle, I look forward to further conversing with you and talking about how our businesses are very much aligned. I worked with very similar people. uh, And often those people want to write books. uh, And many people that write those books want to turn them into other lines of income. So there's lots of opportunity for our interaction in the future. But fundamentally, it's getting the story out and you are the person to do that. So I'm glad we had the opportunity to introduce that. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you so much for having me today. Thank you again. And we will see you all next time to introduce another genius entrepreneur that has created a business out of their passion and their genius. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Culture, Communication, and Brand Moments with your host, Shelby Jill Long. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we will see you on the next episode.